God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Professional Truckers Association Church. Again, I thank God for you. Would you bow your heads with me uh, just for a few moments as we pray to the God of our salvation and ask him to be our honored guest today. With bowed heads, Father, I just want to thank you because you are so good. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. You smiled upon us once again. You even bring the vision that we had to pass, and I want you to know that I am so grateful for that. I ask now that you bless this service in Jesus' name. Let your word go forth with power and anoint me. I need your anointing in everything I do. We also ask that you bless and anoint the uh the coming revival, anoint us for your service and let many people come to Jesus and, and uh, let all those who need be be uplifted and, and we want to do a great work for you, Lord. We cannot do it without you and without your power, without your Holy Spirit. Please, God, smile on us and we will give your name the praise. The glory and the honor shall be thine in thy son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, I am so glad to be here today. I have a, a couple of announcements for you today. Very important announcements. Thank God for the Professional Truckers Association. God has blessed us and uh, uh, let us have a tent uh, to where we could come to where you are. Get ready. The, the Professional Truckers uh, Association Church is coming to you this coming week on uh, September uh, the 24th, 25th, and 26th. We will be set up uh, in San Antonio, Texas off Foster Road. I encourage all of you to come. Foster Road is right down, uh, uh, it is the same street that the Flying J truck stop is on, the TA truck stop is there, uh, a, a mile over the pilot truck stop and the petrol truck stop, they're there. So I encourage you to come, all the truck drivers, there's, there's some room for some trucking, parking. Uh, you're welcome to, uh, to drive your truck by. If you contact me after you've heard this message, I will do all I can to get you shuttled down there if you can't bring your big rig. So I encourage you to contact me. You, Our contact information will be given. Or wherever you hear me on the World Wide Web, you can contact me there and I'll make the arrangements. If you're going to be at the Flying J truck stop, at the TA truck stop, at the Pilot truck stop, or at the uh, Petro truck stop, we will do all, I can, all we can to get you to the services. Uh, the services will be at uh, 6601 Foster Road, uh, right next door to a small convenience store. If you come down Foster Road, you can't miss, miss us. Right on, uh, right near the corner of Foster Road and Lakeview, uh, Lakeview Drive. Uh, right there, you will see the tent. Uh, off to the right, if you're coming from I-10, you will see the tent there, and uh, we will be there, ready to serve you and minister to you the Word of God. There'll be great singing there, and and uh, great music music going forth and also great gospel preaching. So I encourage you to be there. I will tell you, I won't be the only preacher, but I'll be the keynote speaker on two nights. So you need to be there. I encourage you to come and watch God bless your soul. Now that is, I'll give you the address again. That's 6201, 6601 Foster Road, San Antonio, Texas. Please come and uh, bring your big rig. There's, if there's room there for you to park, you can park. If uh, there's not room there for you, we will follow you there to the truck stop and get you back down to where the revival is going for. We will begin services at 7 p.m. each night. That is September the 24th, 25th, and 26th. That's this month. Next week is coming uh, coming rapidly. You'll see that giant tent out there along with all the sound equipment to where we can lift up the name of Jesus. I am looking for you. Well, we have other churches invited. It's not just for truckers. You got to understand anything that God has is for anyone who will come. So I'm inviting all of you to come and let's worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Uh, we have invited churches. We have invited uh, other ministries to come and take part of what we're doing. You will hear many great testimonies. So please stop by and see what God has for you. 
Today we're going to be talking from a passage of scripture, even continuing the series that we have been in. And I encourage you to pray for me that God will anoint me for his, for his service, uh, even right now as I minister to you. Now, the word of God reads, we're going to go to the 13th chapter of the, of the book of St. Mark. And uh, the Lord thought it so important that we get this message, uh, that he wrote it almost, uh, uh, almost vividly, uh, almost the same uh, in three other gospels. That's Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, uh, the, the words uh, run so coincide, so much alike, but each of these writers thought it, it, it important to write to you. It is the words of Jesus, and I want you to prepare for what's going on. Now, I would, now, I would that I could just preach a message to you uh, that, to, that will always lift your spirits and and, uh, 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 you know, uh, have you glowing when you leave. But we also, as a pastor, have an obligation to give, get you the entire word of God so you, that, so you will be prepared for what, what Jesus said will happen. Uh, the Lord loves you so much that he would never leave you in the dark uh, and not prepare you for the things that were coming upon this earth. Now, it may not happen in our generation, but the word of the Lord said it will happen. So you you need to prepare your children and let them know what is coming upon this earth. Now, the 14th verse of the 13th chapter of the book of St. Mark, it reads as this. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, uh, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. Then let him that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Uh, well, what are we saying here? Now, uh, we talk about the abomination of desolation, uh, but I want you to get Daniel's wording of it. Uh, we, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, uh, he recapped it and said the abomination of desolation, plain enough. Uh, but to give you even more clarity, let's, let's talk about Daniel's own words, uh, the abomination uh, that make it desolate. Uh, that's how Daniel quoted it, uh, the abomination uh, that make it desolate. Uh, in other words, something so evil, uh, so sinister, a uh, stench in God's nostril uh, that it will make desolate. Uh, I can name many things that could happen uh, uh, to make desolate, and one that's very logic to, logical to all of us, uh, a nuclear war uh, or, or or a nuclear blast, all of that makes desolate, or maybe just a massive of uh, stars uh, uh, fall into the earth, meteor showers, and all of these type of things, uh, it could make desolate. So there's many ways uh, that the earth could be made desolate, but Daniel said uh, that, that uh, the abomination, something so sinister, uh, that's going to make this world desolate. Uh, uh, make parts of this world desolate. I will say all of the world desolate. Verse 14, but when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of uh, by Daniel the prophet, stand where it ought, standing where it ought, ought not, uh, let him that readeth understand, uh, then let him that is in Judea flee unto the mountains. Uh, now we're going into these passages of scripture, letting us know how quickly and how abruptly it will happen. Uh, well, let's read on in verse 15. The Bible reads, uh, and let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter it uh, to take anything out of the house. Uh, so it's going to be so quick and so abrupt. If you're on the housetop, you don't have time to come down and go in the house and gather what it, it, the, the little things that you think you might need to live. Uh, it'll be so abrupt. You won't have time to come down, get your toothbrush and, and pack an overnight bag or, or get, a, uh, get a little food to take with you. It will be so abrupt uh, that whatever happens, when it happens, uh, you're going to have to take immediate action uh, and run for safety or run for help. Uh, well, verse 15, let me read it again and we will continue. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, uh, neither enter it to take anything out of his house. Now let's continue reading. 
and let him that is in the field not turn back again to take up his garment. Uh, in other words, if you're in the field working, you're 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 on a tractor plowing. And in Bible days, they didn't have a tractor. They they use animals and things of that nature to till the soil. Uh, if you're out in the field uh, working with the ground, whatever you may do, uh, maybe doing whether that be chopping cotton, picking cotton, watering cotton, uh, or any other thing that you may be doing, uh, uh, preparing vegetables. Uh, when this happens, you don't have time to leave the field and go home and get any type of things to prepare yourself. Again, 16, and let him that is in the field not turn back again to take his garments. Uh, uh, shall we read on? But woe to them that are with child and to them that are nursing children in those days. Uh, woe unto them. Now this is not to scare you. All we're doing is showing you the severity of what will happen. Are we trying to scare you? No, 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 no. That's not it. That's we. all we're doing is letting you know what our Lord Jesus Christ uh, and the prophets in the Bible were talking about. That these things will come up on the earth. They will come so quick. Uh, those that are with child, you know you have your, your baby and, you, and it's hard for you to get around if you're with child pregnant. You can't run and do a lot of other things because you're carrying a baby. Uh, or if you have children uh, that are small enough, they can't run for themselves. So you got to gather them. You're not only thinking about your own safety, but you're thinking about the safety of your children. Uh, this is how severe it will be uh, and how quick it will happen. Uh, so all we're doing here is trying to prepare you, uh, and we're going to get to the bright side of this if I have time in this lesson. Uh, all I'm trying to get you to do uh, is be ready. Uh, anytime you're ready uh, and you got your heart uh, and your hand in God's hand, uh, he's going to be there to stand up for you. Uh, he's going to be there to lead you and guide you and get you to the destinations you need to get. All I'm saying, you need to get right with God. You need to be right with God because we don't know when these things will happen. Prepare yourself. Stay ready. Whenever it happens, you're going to have God on your side. Whenever things happen, God will lead you and guide you. Now, verse 18 reads, Pray uh, and pray that your flight be not in the winter, uh, not even in bad weather. Uh, you don't have time to go get a change of clothes, don't have time to go get your coat. Well, well, you don't want that in the winter time. Well, let's read on. I got to get a couple more verses so you can get the fullness of what we're talking about. In verse 19, the Bible reads, For in those days shall the affliction or the trouble, uh, the things that will happen on the earth, uh, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created until this time, neither shall be. Uh, what is he talking about? Nothing like that had ever happened in history, uh, and nothing like that will ever happen again. Uh, that's what our Lord is saying to us. Uh, well, uh, it's going to be that severe uh, that it had not happened in our history. And whatever happens, uh, it will not happen again. Uh, let's read verse 20. And except the Lord shall shorten those days, uh, no flesh should be saved. Uh, in other words, we can look at that in more than one way. Uh, if God does not shorten those days, everybody will die. Uh, no flesh will be saved uh, or it will be so severe that no, no one could even come to a saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ unless God, uh, by intervention, would let it happen. Except the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, for the elect's sake, those that do walk upright and, walk, and, and, and do what God would have them, for the elect's sake, whom he has chosen, he has shortened the days. We can look at that in more than one way. He has shortened the days. Either he can take his elect completely out of it. He can rapture us away Way. Uh, he can rapture his church on out of here, uh, shorten the days for us, or he can shorten the time span uh, that this terrible trouble would be. Uh, but we talked about it when we studied uh, in the book of Daniel. Uh, we know that there's going to be seven years, uh, three and a half years. We did the math, uh, and three and a half years uh, equal the seven years of this tribulation. Uh, so that will be harsh enough uh, for many people to die, uh, harsh enough for many people to lose their lives. Let's continue reading. 
Uh, and then uh, if any man shall say to you, lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe it not. Uh, and this is one thing I want to warn you of uh, and get you to understand that in the last days, there are going to be people, a false Christ, arise. Uh, people who will say they are Christ. Uh, though, uh, uh, if and then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. Don't you believe it? Number one, I told you more than one time in, in our courses of study that if anyone says that Christ, you need to check his credentials. Number one, he's got to be born of a virgin. If he's not born of a virgin, you know that that can't be the Christ. And he has to have died and been raised resurrected. If that hadn't happened to him, believe me, babies, that's not the Christ. Well, well, search your scripture. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name, we could go on down the line. And the Bible plainly tells us in the book of Isaiah, he should be born of a virgin. So if he's not born of a virgin, if he has a biological father, then you know a biological father on this earth, you know that that's not the Christ. If he had not been res died and resurrected from the dead, that can't be the Christ. Uh, you got to understand, you got to do the math. Somebody come talking about that they're the Christ, uh, uh, or they're the anointed one, well, talk to him about it. Uh, ask him about his mommy and his daddy. Uh, ask him as he died and rose again for your sins. Uh, well, you got to understand, there's only one Christ. Uh, that's Jesus Christ, uh, my Savior, uh, my God. You got to understand how important Jesus is. And that's what I want you to know is, and get to know the real Christ. I want you to get to know the real Jesus. When you get to know the real Jesus, I'm talking about the one born of a virgin, wrapped up in swaddling clothes, laid in a manger. I'm talking about the one that walked this earth, walked this earth as a man, but indeed he was God. I'm talking about the one that they crucified there on Calvary Hill. I'm talking about that one that had nails put in his hands and, and spikes put in his feet, that pierced in the side, a, plat a crown of thorns platted into his skull, blood come running down. I want you to get to know that Jesus. But then they laid him in a borrowed tomb. When they laid him in a borrowed tomb, he did not stay there. On the third day, he was resurrected from the dead. Now that's the Jesus you need to get to know. Any other Christ, anyone say they're the Christ, they're not the Christ. Unless they, you can describe them just like I described him just now. He is so real. And I want you to get to know the Christ that I know. Well, verse 22 reads, for Christ, false Christ and false prophets shall rise. False Christ and false prophets. These things that the Bible said they will rise. Well, I'm going to tell you something about a prophet. He doesn't have to prove himself anyway. If he's a real prophet, when he prophesies, what he says will come to pass. If he's a real prophet, he's going he's gonna to know our God. God. You got to understand because many can, can say words and sometimes people can say words that might happen like they said it. But it's a difference when they say words that are energized by God and they come to pass. Believe me, you will know the difference. So they're going to be false Christ and false prophets arise. And shall show signs, shall show signs and wonders, and seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. In other words, these people that call themselves false Christ, call themselves false prophets, they're going to seduce many people. People will see the things that they do, the works that they do, and and you got to get that now and see all these things happening. That's the reason I warn you: you don't go about miracles to. To, to say that someone's a Christ uh, because miracles happen. Uh, things happen in life that we can call a miracle, but that doesn't make them Christ. Uh, you got to understand, uh, or that does not make them a prophet. Uh, a true prophet uh, is following uh, the, uh, the living God. Uh, a true prophet uh, has a, a relationship uh, with the living God. Uh, he gets what he says uh, and, and how 
how he says, uh, says it uh, from the true and the living God. I hope you're hearing me today. Uh, well, uh, these these particular uh, false Christs and, and false prophets, uh, they will show signs and wonders 